Uh, what's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking out Blackthorn Arena. Fair warning, this game is kind of rough, but it's of a genre that I particularly am sort of like addicted to and can't help it. I really wish more games would be made in the gladiator ludus management sim genre and that they would get quite a bit more budget. And so since there's so few entries to kind of that type of game, we're going to be checking this out here today. Uh, be aware that this game is considered complete by the developers. I would argue with that and say that there's like a lot of bugs and a lot of things that need to be fiddled with with this game, but they are still bug patching and they are still bug fixing, so that's a good sign. Um, this game throws a lot at you and it can be kind of difficult to figure out, so hopefully my video will kind of like guide your steps if you decide to get this title. Uh, but this is effectively a game where you are a Lannister and your job is to run a gladiator arena in a fantasy world with orcs and elves and humans and dwarves and stuff like that. You're going to raise your gladiators, you're going to train your gladiators, you're going to customize their equipment, their stats and everything else. And then you're going to go through and sort of like try to take them as far as you can without running out of money. And so like... I do really, really like Domina, which is the most recent game that came out in this particular genre. The problem with Domina is there's not a lot of depth to it. Like, it's kind of a game that plays itself in a lot of ways, and you just kind of, like, cut it loose. And so while it's a looker, and stylistically it was a really cool game, it didn't quite scratch my itch for Gladiator games the same way that, like, Gladius did, or, like, Colosseum Road to Freedom did. Uh, I like my gladiator simulators to be in depth and give me lots of control and let me fiddle with things And while this game does have a lot of rough edges It does allow you an incredible amount of control as to the amount of stuff that you want to take care of uh, We can go to the role library right now. We can actually make our own gladiators, which is kind of cool uh, You can create a, a gladiator over here uh, just to sort of like Give them different custom loadouts at the beginning of the game if you haven't done this setup right here It will just assign you two randomly generated gladiators The problem with that is you can end up with gladiators that just have stats like all over the place and are absolutely awful And so it just sort of like I would probably recommend making Your own gladiators even if you don't customize the hell out of them uh, We'll name this guy Hadvar there we go and so he is a dwarf. Uh, we've got his body details with his attributes. We can effectively decide what we want him to do right here. Uh, since he's going to be a strength character, we want him to kind of have strength, endurance, and agility. And so we sort of want to fiddle with these stats until he has that. He's got a lot of agility right here, so that's not bad. Uh, he's got dual wield skill, which is kind of a bummer. Oh, we can decide on his genres too. Uh, so I wanted him to kind of be like a, a gladiator. Let's call him a gladiator, and then we'll call him a... Defender I guess and we'll kind of see where his stats end up. That's actually not too shabby I'd prefer some of that being endurance, but it's not terrible uh, Let's see what we can land here as far as his stats go. That's not too bad right there uh, We've got everything kind of in the quadrants where I want them to be He's got a bit more willpower than I'd like but like you know something like that would be pretty good too right there That's not terrible, and then he's got one-handed skill and I was gonna make him a sword and board guy So that sounds good uh, we can go over to his character right here. We can give him his voice. We can give him like his default pose if you wanted to. Uh, we can also kind of give him face paint and, like woad and stuff like that if it seems like the sort of thing that you wanted to add to your character if you're into it. We can also choose like a portrait that'll go along with it too. So there you go. We've got Hadvar's portrait. And I think we, we can save him right there. So he's been saved. Now we want to make a secondary character. And so, like, let's go ahead and we'll create another one so that we can pick and choose who we want to have. Wow, that is a swole dude right there. That man, he's on that. He's on that 300 diet. Uh, we will give him a little bit of equipment so he's somewhat covered. Let's take a look. I don't actually care that much about his facial detail. Like, I think it looks good, in all honesty. Uh, with his attributes, I'd kind of like for him to be sort of a pole arms guy. And it looks like we've got a decent spread of stats right there. I don't know what the total number of points is. I haven't actually added all this up. If I could have somebody be, like, dual wield, that'd be cool, too. Like, I'm fine with, really, whatever lands. Uh, he could be a two-handed guy right there. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, we could put him on two-handed. He's got a lot of strength and a lot of endurance, so I think that'll work out okay. He's sanguine. Uh, let's put him, like, he's noble. We'll just have him on normal. Can I hear the voice? I guess I can't hear the voice right now. See, it's a little stuff like that. That's what I mean is the game has rough edges. Like, you can pick a voice, but you can't hear the voice. So, like, it should be, like, a little thing right here that allows you to click it and, like, play the... To play the voice. There you go. Take his portrait real fast. And then we will go through. And I really didn't want him to be anonymous. But I can rename him once we get in game. Or we can go right here. Uh, we will name this guy 
Leo. There we go. Perfect. So we've got Hadvar and Leo. They're both all set up. So our preliminary stuff is done. So now we're going to start a new game. We're going to leave it on the normal difficulty, and we're going to come in and create our Lannister, uh, which is effectively our player's avatar inside of the game. So we will name ourselves Splatius Maximus. Perfect. And then I want it to look like the portrait. And so I think I'll probably go and just add a beard to him real fast. There's not a lot of portraits to choose from, like, anyways. So, like, I wouldn't stress about it too much. Like, I like my character to max up. I like my character to match up with my portrait. And so, you know, it is what it is. We'll just go with the first portrait that's up right here. And what was I going to do next? Oh, yeah, we needed to select our initial guys. So I wanted Hadvar and Leo. Are they still selected? Good. They're still selected. All right. Let's start the game off. 300 years ago, the ancient Tali Empire fell apart in an unprecedented disaster called the Great Decadence. Its land was divided into several kingdoms and its many slaves and gladiators were either liberated or exiled. Those grandiose arenas of which the Talian people were once so proud are now all but abandoned or destroyed. Only a small part of this ancient recreation survived, lingering in a brutal land full of chaos and disorder called the Freelands. In the depths of the underground, among its abandoned ruins, ten arenas remain and persevere in this gory sport. For many generations, your family has presided over the oldest of these, the Blackthorn Arena. While under your grandfather's rule, the arena's fame reached its zenith, as did your family's wealth. Then, it fell under the care of your father. He proved to be unfit, and the Blackthorn Arena's reputation and popularity declined irreversibly. To save the crumbling family business, your father did something shameful, dishonest, and unacceptable to his peers, which is using the forbidden art of magic in the games. His trick was discovered, and he was killed by assassins from other arenas. After your father's death, an enemy took over the Blackthorn Arena, driving you and your mother out of your home. Ten years later, you've returned under the guise of a nameless merchant. The only possession you have is a bag of coins. The past ten years have seen you sacrifice everything you've earned to restore your family's arena. Upon your return, an aged loyal servant of your family recognized you. He swears to help you reclaim your family's glory. Two days later, under his arrangement, you enrolled in a small match in a nameless arena with only two untrained gladiators. And this, this is where your road to restoration begins. All right, so here we go. We're loading on into the fight right now. Uh, this fight is winnable and losable, by the way. You are not guaranteed a win in this fight. I've lost it. I've won it. This is one of those games that doesn't give you a whole lot of guidance, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Thank you, my friends, for joining me here in my humble arena, especially those of you who have traveled a great distance to be here. Today, I'm proud to present some new faces, but before the game begins, let me introduce to you Master Splatius Maxim. You damn right. You say it was some bass in your voice. The man who recently bought the Blackthorn Arena. Yes, the legendary Blackthorn. Of course, you guys have all heard of the Blackthorn Arena. Who hasn't heard of the Blackthorn Arena? It's back in business and ready for glory. Apparently, people are upset that I'm back. To be fair, I will send in two of my novices. Aw, oh, dude, he's got a bow guy. The bow guys are rough. And then here's our two guys. Let's welcome our gladiators from the Blackthorn Arena. All right, so we can push pause this by hitting the space bar in just a minute. Who will leave the arena alive today? It's time to find out. All right, so our two-handed guy is going over there, and then this person is named after lettuce or something. So I'm going to have you attack over there, and hopefully this just turns out okay. Uh, looks like we have landed the first strike. 
A little dodge action right there. The left fight appears to be going like 50-50 so far. And the right fight appears to be going our way. So we'll see how these guys pull out so far. He's going to need a shield to really reach his full potential. Yeah, swap targets for me, would you? I would like him to go down. He's yielding. Okay, we'll stab him in the back because obviously that's an honorable thing to do. And then you... Get back over here and help out with this. Aw, oh, dude, he recovered? Okay, go back and kill him then. There you go. Smack him in the face until he yields. There you go. All better. Harden has been taken care of. And then Mistress Lettuce down here is going to be our next target. And so these two, we don't have any abilities or anything to modify this fight. Uh, I will tell you this. The beginning fight goes a lot better when you create custom characters that have, like, maxed out stats and stuff. Just based on dice rolls. When you take the random characters, God, they can be all over the place, man. The random characters, like, always have the right weapon to go along with their stat lineup. But, like, sometimes you get some really weird stuff. The Gladiators of Blackthorn are victorious. Not bad for our young master. Now that the winner must decide the loser's fate, die or live. Uh, if you heard, they were all shouting, kill, 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 so we should tell them to die. And there you go. We gained five favor for free. And our guys are victorious. Yep, that's right. Take a little take a little victory walk right there. Hey, nice. Leo hit level two. That will be helpful. That will be... Oh, wow, we killed both of them. They both died. Usually you only get knocked out. Oh, we killed both of them. Brutal. Oh, never mind. We, we put the thumbs down. I forgot we gave him the old thumb. Uh, how quickly and how frequently I dispose of human life. Uh, I totally forgot that I had given the thumbs down like eight seconds ago. Yeah, it's pretty rare for people to die in combat in this game. Normally they get like horrifically wounded and maimed, but they don't die. <laughs> Normally they'll end up with like, listen, your ear is now on your asshole, but you are still alive. So that's a good thing. And people just accept that at face value. All right, so they're going to hit us with some tutorializing right here. It doesn't matter. We're going to skip it because I don't care. Uh, there we go. Ultimately, what we're asking him is, like, how do we get started? He gives you some very, very vague platitudes about what to start with. But I'm going to talk specifically about what we're doing here before we go any further. So that if you end up getting this game, like, this is a game that gives you, like, no tutorial. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of guidance. Like, there is a tips mode you can turn on where as you click on things, it'll give you, like, a little pop-up box blurb about what that does. But honestly, it's a game that you're going to have to play for a little while before you get a feel for it. Like, I've probably got about two hours played in the game, and that entire two hours was me kind of starting and restarting and figuring out a system, then restarting, then, you know, going over and over and over again. And if that learning curve right there is not for you, like, you don't feel like bashing your face against it like old school style, I understand completely. Uh, let's heal up both of our gladiators. Let's talk about, we've got the gladiator cells over here. This is where everybody lives. Uh, we've got the training ground. This is where they obviously train. We have the main hall. This is where they hang out and they can eat food if their morale starts to get low. But it usually helps out if you have a cook to make that go a little bit better. Like if I put a cook on here, you'll see they get better morale restoration than if you don't. But anyways, we can kick... Oh, never mind. No, they don't. Uh, maybe it just affects how fast they cook food. Hell if I know. Either way, the treatment room is what we're really interested in right now because we want these guys who are wounded to come back in here and they'll get 15 HP back per day that they're resting. And we specifically wanted to assign them in here because we are going to go to market to sort of like grab some more talent. Uh, this is the torture chamber. What the torture chamber effectively does is the gladiators, they have an obedience level and like they can rebel and they can like attack you and like kill your guards and stuff like that and they can fight with each other and kill each other if their moods get too low uh this room is where you will take somebody that's specialized in like torturing and they'll basically break their will so that they like follow you around and do what they're supposed to do kind of a grisly topic for a video game but i will withhold my judgment on that for right now uh we can go to market i think it's a really good idea that we do so we can either pay a bunch of money and have one of our servants go there for us or we can go there personally. If we send the servant, we sacrifice money for our time. And so it'll cost us 10 silver, but we won't waste a day going to market so that we can still fiddle around with all the functions and orders of kind of like day-to-day -day business. We don't really have anything to do right now, so we're going to go to the market. And specifically what we want to find is we want to find a doctor. That's what we're looking for right now is we want to find one of our slaves that has a really high doctoring skill. And if they don't have high doctoring skill, they don't get hired. We can strike out here. It is entirely possible that we don't get what we want while we're in the neighborhood. But I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that that doesn't come to pass okay so here we are let's have a look around uh, we got somebody that's a cook and a torturer we have somebody who's a decent blacksmith uh, we've got a cook right there we've got a cook and a blacksmith 
and no doctors so far, actually. No doctors. So we're just going to have to hire talent for right now. And really the easiest way to do that is just to look and see what their stats are. This guy's pretty good. This Carlson guy. Basically, we're looking for an anchor gladiator. Uh, we're looking for somebody that's going to like do our initial fights for us while our other gladiators hang out and train and get stronger. Uh, so we'll take him for sure. Yep, we'll take him. He's going to be our dual-wielding flashy champion. Uh, but nobody here has any skills whatsoever. Yep, no, skill, no skills in doctoring. So that's a bummer. We'll have to come back another day. Luckily, we have plenty of time on our hands, so it's not really that big of a deal. I would think about picking up some weapons here for the new guy. So we've got a katana. It's pretty pricey, but it is a really strong weapon. Uh, my suggestion would be that maybe we pick up some axes and warhammers and things. Those are kind of cheap. We're going to want to pick him up some armor as well, just in case he doesn't have any of that stuff. So we'll get him some light armor over here. Uh, we will more than likely get him like a medium shoulder pad. We'll get him like a light boot. There's no... There's no light pants, unfortunately, so we're not going to be able to dive on into that. But it's okay. Let's go back to our... We'll go back to our arena now, and we'll kind of, like, set people up to get things done. Uh, we're going to be passing a bit of time here at the beginning of the game. One thing you do want to pay attention to is your overhead. This is how much money it's costing you to exist every single day. So, when you run out of money, that's it. Game's over. And so, in the treatment room, how's everybody feeling? One guy's healed up. Other guy is not. So what we'll do now is we kind of want to put people in here to train. Leo hit level 2. Carlson will be in there as well. We don't have anybody that's got training skill. If we did, we could take that gladiator and we could effectively make them our doctore. And he would like sit up here and he would train them and he would increase the amount of XP that they get per day. Uh, they can also have a practice fight against each other. I haven't fiddled around with that just yet because I was worried one of them would die. Uh, because it's kind of like a free fire fight. But what we do want to do is let's take a look at Carlson and like see where his stats are at. And so Carlson here, he's got some skills. It looks like he's got blinding dust, so he's a dirty fighter. He can throw that into the enemy's eyes. It looks like he's got Fortress, uh, which allows him to increase his endurance for eight seconds. So we'll put that over there. Uh, we've also got Pain Spot Attack, which is effectively fighting a weak spot and hitting a minute. Uh, so the willpower will drop. We'll want to put some uh, gear on this guy. Yeah, we can go for like a Warhammer and a Battle Axe. That sounds pretty good. It's a pretty cool set of weapons right there. It looks like he started out with a Slave Chest. Uh, we've got a little bit more room. I can probably give him a Gauntlet. I may be able to get away with giving him like an actual armor right there. And some actual shoes. That's good. Actually, he came in right up. We probably could have put a helmet on him too. I'm actually sort of surprised. I didn't realize how high his strength was. So I should have bought a helmet while I was over there. Uh, but anyways, that armor will help reduce damage a little bit for now. And then he's equipped with the weapons that he needs. He's got four in dual wielding, which means that he can go down four levels in the dual wielding tree over here. There you go. And then also there's kind of like his genre as well. So everybody has two sub-genres that they sort of like start out with. My guess is that he's defender. Yeah, so it looks like he has increased his resistances by quite a bit, in fact, in there. And then he's probably... A rogue would be my other guess. Yeah, he's rogue and defender. And so it looks like he's going to be able to increase his damage by 20% when he attacks from behind, which is pretty actually sexy. Uh, these guys are doing their thing over here. Uh, with Leo, we'll want to take a look at him and we'll want to assign some skill points. He's got three potential points we can put in for right now. My suggestion would be is that we dump that into strength for the moment so that his encumbrance gets higher and higher and higher. Uh, that way we can actually slap like real gear on him. He's got two-handed skill already, so he's going to stick with a bastard sword. For the moment, we want to take a look at his weapon skills, and we want to see if there's anything we can add for two-handed to make him a little bit stronger. Uh, whenever he gets blocked, he deals more damage to the target's stamina. It's not bad, but really only affects like shield users, so we'll take a look at his genre instead. He can be a berserker right there. Every percentage of health loss will grant you an attack speed bonus. That's pretty good. And he's also got, what was his other genre? Commander. Okay, so increase allies, stamina, and magic restore. Okay, well, we'll go with this for right now. There we go. So we will increase the amount of attack speed he gets by 0.5% for every percent of health lost. That's pretty good. That means that by half his health gone, he's attacking, like, way faster. So he should actually turn into kind of a disgusting wrecking ball as he gets lower and lower on health. Hopefully. 
I'm going to leave them there to train. We want to take a look at the map, and we want to see if there's any easy fights that we can just sort of lap up here. Uh, there's one fight right there, but that's not going to be advantageous. There's a fight against a brown bear, which is kind of like, oof. Our team size will be two if we go for that one, but I don't know if we can handle a brown bear. It pays out pretty good, but like I'm pretty sure a bear is going to like smack the hell out of me. So it looks like there's no other arena fights ready to go, so we'll just bypass a day. Uh, two of our gladiators got into a conflict. As their master, how will you reconcile it? Punish them both. Uh, their obedience will go up, and their health will go down. They are still in the training ground. We're missing a little bit of health. I did want to take a look around for any fights that might be in the area. Uh, that fight's a little bit sketchy. That's a fight against a bunch of wolves, which just seems kind of dangerous at the moment. Another brown bear fight right there, which was scheduled for yesterday, or for tomorrow, or something like that when we saw it before. So you guys just keep training. Uh, we'll see where you end up. How's our treatment room going? Oh, good. He's fully treated. Nice. Okay, so we will put him in over here. Hadvar, do your thing, man. I need you to hit level two. Badly. Uh, do we have anything going on down here? Nothing. Same fights as yesterday. Uh, our gladiator got injured while he was training, which is a bummer. Leo and Carlson have a conflict yet again. How will we reconcile him? Punish him again. Do what you gotta do. Uh, we have two guys here. So a wandering merchant has come to your arena with some slaves that he just bought from the slave hunter. Maybe one will fit your interests. Uh, yeah, actually. I'll take this guy on the left. This guy on the left is a doctor and a cook. Yep, I'll take the guy on the left. It's going to increase our overhead ever so slightly, but that's okay. We're going to need a doctor anyways. Hadvar just leveled up, which is good. Uh, so we will give Hadvar a shield, actually, right? Because he needed sword and board, correct? That's what we were kind of angling him towards. Uh, we will give him... Let's give him a tiny bit more encumbrance. I'd like to equip him and get him kind of like knocked out with having some more like armor and whatnot. Uh, we can also probably just give him, we got blunt damage right there. Those dull swords are not that great. As far as his skills go, he is a defender, so we can increase his resistances. I think that's a really good idea. 10% resistance is no slouch, especially considering the fact that he's already getting 10% from right there. He's getting 7% from right there. So yeah, we just increased his resistance from like round about 25% to like 35%. So that's pretty good. A one-third damage reduction from every hit is not bad. Uh, it's definitely going to be helpful. Now, these dudes are getting a little bit wounded right now. Let's take a look at the world map and see if there's anything around. We haven't gotten lucky with an arena fight yet, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, it's a level 8 and a level 2. It's kind of a sketchy fight. We got a level 9, level 2, level 2. Okay. Sometimes, like, don't don't get greedy about these fights. Like, sometimes you sort of want to, like, just wait it out and kind of see what you can get going on. There's a Lioness right there who was a level 8, and our team size would be 2. If we had a couple more people that were a little higher level, I'd probably risk it. But for right now, let's kind of... Let's wait. Apparently, these two really do not like each other. Oh, really? Is it Carlson's fault? Punish them both. Uh, let's see here. We've got a merchant who's come by who has a Warhammer. Um, no, I don't really need to spend money right now. I'd prefer not to. Ideally, what I'm looking for right here, if you're wondering what it is, I'm looking for 1v1s. Like, I'm looking for easy 1v1s versus, like, level 1 opponents and things. You don't want to, like, send your guys in too hot and spicy. Uh, one of your gladiators got injured. Okay, I can deal with that. He's at 73% right now. Let's go to the treatment room, and our healer is Jarvis. And we will put Leo in there to get healed for right now. Put Hadvar in there as well. Uh, I would like you to do some research into, like, medicine. So that'll make us, like, cure a little bit better, I think, when it concludes. It'll make us a little bit stronger. And as the days pass, we'll take a look and see what we can do here. Uh, there is a 4v4. Uh, the 4v4 is kind of hot and spicy. They have a level 7 mixed in there. If he was like level 4 or level 5, I might risk it. But it's still too risky of a fight. What do we have going on over here? Bunch of level 2s and a level 5. That might be more worth it. Although the damage is going to fly around pretty good on that one. Yeah, I'll enroll in it. Why not? Uh, Jarvis, are you good with anything? Well, I'll tell you what, since you've got so much agility, I'm going to put you on dual wield, bro. All right. 
Oh, he can't be to another side. Okay, I gotta unassign him from his job first. There. You are unemployed now. Let's go do this fight. Like, I can't do an entire episode without doing a fight. Like, we have to do a fight. We have to. I feel like we can take this. I, I feel like we can give this a go if we focus fire pretty good. All right, so all four of our guys are here. We dispatched our gladiators. And so I think the fight is today. Yeah. This is one of those little things I haven't figured out yet. Is that um, sometimes when you assign gladiators to go to a fight, like if it's on like the day after tomorrow or something like that, like they just go on their own. And then other times it takes you in and you watch the fight and you can actually command it. Like I want to watch the fight right now, but like it doesn't seem to to want to let me do it. Like the button doesn't seem to work. It's one of the little like idiosyncrasies of the game that I haven't figured out just yet. Like I, I fiddled with it. But, like, I, I still haven't figured out why exactly I'm not allowed to go and watch this fight right here. So, anyways, just something to keep in mind. This is one of those little odd things that with a couple hours of playing, I still haven't figured out why it happens. I assume it has something to do with the fact that, like, I'm supposed to, like, travel there or something. But I'm not super sure. Sometimes it shows me the fight, sometimes it doesn't. Like, I'm clicking on the watch right there, but, like, nothing happens. So, I guess what I'll do after I fiddle with it is I'll just bypass a day and we'll see if we won. Uh, our gladiators did win the game at the Desert Arena, so we got 18 silver for that. That's another six days worth of runway. And 16 favor. And we got a super awesome arm guard. So that's pretty rad. I'll take it. Uh, I wish I could have watched the fight, but we got that weird thing that happened. In fact, I actually I re-recorded this video the last time because that happened too. And I just can't seem to figure out how to fix it. Wish that I could, but I just... Can't seem to find it. 85% damage right there. 88% damage. Apparently, our gladiators did work. That's what I learned here today, is that our gladiators... How much does it cost to expand a slot? It costs like 10 bucks. Eh, no, we'll just let them heal the way they are right now. Who's healing? Hadvar and... Okay. All right, we'll put him in there to train for right now, and it looks like they all hit, like, level 3 and stuff, too, so that's good. Leo hit level 3. Nice, dude. I'm about it. I am about it. Uh, Leo's also got, like, a whole bunch of room. We can probably, like, give him, like, a bigger, beefier gauntlet, should we desire to do so. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that's definitely workable. Uh, as far as his skills go, where was I putting his skills before? Oh, yeah, the Berserky Boy business. I forgot about that. We were trying to make him, like, the uh, Berserker champion. We should probably go and check out some weapon skills, too. Uh, we'll give him Overwhelming for now. That sounds good. I would like to take... He does have a lot of strength for the moment. Let's go ahead and dump some points into two-handed. That way we can increase his possibilities right there, too. Uh, we can get Spiral Slash, and then we can also get, like, Armor Crash... Which will be really, really nice to have. I need to pick up some equipment. These guys actually are not equipped as well as they should be. Now, it looks like in the case of Carlson, he did not level up. In the case of Jarvis, he hit level 2, which is really, really good. Uh, so I can live with that. Unfortunately, we can't like increase his medical skill. I haven't really determined exactly how his medical skill is... How his medical skill is increased. I assume that it just goes up over time. But, you know... What do I know about anything? He should have some skills to play around with over here, too. With his genre, he's got what? So he's got sword and shield. What genres is he? He's a berserker, and he's a commander. Okay. I don't know if there's anything good in the commander tree. There might be, but I had hoped there would be. I'll probably just dump points into berserker, though, because that attack speed increase per HP lost is just, like, too awesome to walk away from. It's just so good. Like, anybody that plays RPGs knows, like, how dominant attack speed is. And, like, how badly you usually want attack speed, like, on everybody. Uh, if people are not healing... Yeah, put Hadvar in there, I guess. I'm gonna let them do their thing. We'll take a look at the map. Ooh, I'm losing track of time right now. Uh, we got a level 6 fight right there. We've got Basil's Arena. Edison and Lindsay. Oh, it's already started. Aw, oh, weak, dude. If I had seen that yesterday, I probably would have enrolled for it. Although, our guys were kind of wounded, but what are you going to do? See, the watch button worked for him. So, like, I'm wondering if, like, some of the things are just geographically too far away, so you, like, dispatch people and you can't watch the fight. It's just auto-resolved. I don't know. Like, it's a weird thing. Like I said, this game has lots of, like, polish issues and weird bugs. 
But at the end of the day, I have been enjoying it just because it gives me a level of freedom and customization that other games don't. That would sort of be my warning to you is that like... The game has lots of polish issues and lots of stuff that's just kind of like needs to be smoothed over. But at the same time, it gives me a level of freedom that other games do not. And so that's why I end up playing it. Uh, so notable issues is I've noticed some rigging issues, some animation issues. The load times can be absurdly long. Uh, there, there's definitely like random things you're going to run into and bump your elbows on in this game. For example, that bread decided it just didn't want to be on the table anymore and floated off into the distance. Uh, so like you're going to run into problems with this game. All right. I'm just letting you know. And whether or not you can justify running into those problems based on like how much entertainment you can glean is going to be on you. I, I like the game. And, like, I'm sort of, like, easygoing. Like, I like Piranha Bytes games and, like, Focus Home Interactive games. Like, I think they're quirky in their own ways, and I tend to enjoy them. If you, too, find yourself enjoying those sorts of games where they've got, like, lots of flaws, but you can kind of see the gooey center there, uh, you'll probably like this game. But, like, if, like, polish issues and, like, animation issues and, like, balance things kind of bug you, it, it may drive you up a wall. It just sort of depends. I'm willing to forgive that stuff because I'm really into Gladiator games, but, you know, I figured I'd throw it out there. My name is Splattercat. This is the Nerd Castle, where I sift through the pile that found what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I will see you all next time. Thank you for being here. Uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You should also check out... You should absolutely check out the Discord at uh, discord.gg slash splattercatgaming. Uh, you should also check out the Twitch stream where I'm live most days of the week. I'll see you later. Thank you for being here, and hi do everybody.